ladies and gentlemen, 15 rounds of boxing for the light heavyweight championship of the world. On my left, at 173 and a half pounds, the lightweight challenger, the light heavyweight challenger, Mr. Eddie Cotton. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the champion of the world, the light heavyweight champion of the world, at 173 pounds, Mr. Jose Torres. Okay, you guys are receiving instructions from the state athletic commissioner. I'm here to enforce those rules. Now, I'm going to let you guys fight as long as both hands are free. When you're tied up, I'll tell you to break from a distance, either I'll hit you both on the back. Keep your punches up, and uh, good luck to you both, huh? The champion, Jose Torres, has chosen black trunks instead of the customary white the champions usually wear. No particular reason, he just wanted black trunks. It was a surprise somewhat that Cotton outweighed the champion by half a pound at the noon weigh-in. Actually, the weigh-in was 11 o'clock this morning, and uh, by now, both fighters are several pounds heavier. The referee, Nate Morgan of Chicago, was a former Golden Gloves champion in 1950. He worked here in Las Vegas on the Clay Patterson card when he refereed the Lane Spencer fight. Well, all the principals are in the ring now. We're round one in Las Vegas. The champion in black, the challenger in white. Jose Torres, demonstrating that peekaboo style, made famous by Floyd Patterson, but worked to perfection by Torres, taught to him by his early mentor, Cuz Tomato. Chance of a lifetime for 40-year-old Eddie Cotton. It's tonight or probably never. Ring great Joe Lewis thought that Eddie Cotton had a good chance for an upset here tonight, although Torres is anywhere from three to four to one favorite. Torres is sharp. And as late as Friday, boxed nine rounds. And on Thursday went 10 sizzling rounds, which I witnessed. Cotton, on the other hand, has been very lackluster in his final preparations. But his manager, George Samaras, says he did all his serious work in Los Angeles. And here in Las Vegas, he just kept in tune. That right hand missed by the champion. It was high on the top of the head of Eddie Cotton. Cotton has a good right hand. One minute remaining in round one. Torres has a good left hook. In order to throw that left hook, he got to be open for that right hand, so it will make things interesting. Cotton in white, Torres in black, in case you just joined us. We're in round one, closing moments. Wide of the mark. Good right hand by Cotton, good left hand by Cotton that time. Scoring well to the body of the champion. This was about the pace of the Thornton-Torres fight and a good left hook by Torres. Ten seconds to go in round one, the light heavyweight championship of the world from Las Vegas, Nevada. And there's the Round two, the champion in black, the challenger in white. Those who were guessing strategy thought that Cotton would try and jab and run, box. They thought that the champion would crowd him and try a bruising body attack to wear down the older opponent. So let's see what develops. You know the old saying, the best laid plans of mice and men. 
and certainly championship boxing matches go astray. That one scored. That left scored by Cotton. The right seemed maybe it was a little low, and now the boys touch gloves. Cotton indicating he meant no foul. Flicking that left out there. That left landed. Torres in that peekaboo style. He has nearly perfect defense. Those little jabs pile up points if you get enough of them. Oh, a good solid shot that time. Torres has 26 knockouts to his credit in 37 victories. One draw with Benny Kid Perret and one loss to Laurentino Fernandez. Eddie Cotton has had 74 fights, 54 wins. Oh, a good vicious left hook to the midsection by Torres. Made Cotton look that time. Cotton has scored 30 knockouts. He's had one draw. He's lost 19 fights and has been KO'd only three times. We're in round two in Las Vegas, Nevada. There have been, there is one minute in round two. There have been 11 championship fights here since 1960, and the title has changed hands three times. Carlos Ortiz got his crown, and we'll be talking to him in just a few minutes. Good, vicious attack by Torres that time. Cotton comes back, though. They are, I, I don't mean to overwork the word vicious, but when the champion lets loose, it is a vicious punch. They're whistling here at ringside. They're humming punches. Cotton is on his toes, however. There's a left, raising the jaw of Cotton that time. It didn't land flush. Cotton pushes him away. Tories in black, Cotton in white. This is a reverse. Ten seconds in round two. All right, we're in round three here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Jose Torres in black and Eddie Cotton in white. And with me at ringside, the lightweight champion of the world, Carlos Ortiz. Carlos, do you think it's a good guess that... Eddie Cotton will have to jab, stick that left in the face of the champion all night in order to stand a chance of winning? Well, Tommy, I, uh, I, I guess uh, he has to uh, stay away from uh, Jose because uh, at this point right now, Jose looks tremendously strong and uh, uh, he, he looks in terrific shape. And as you know, uh, Cotton is, uh, is a little uh, uh, older than, uh, or way older than uh, Jose is, 40 years old against 20, 29 or 30. Oh, and, uh, there was a good score that time by Jose. That right hand landed. Yes. Excuse me, Carlos. The action is getting fast here in the ring, and Torres is scoring well against his older adversary. And if he can wage this hard body attack that it looks like he's trying to set up here, he figures to wear his older man down. Yes. Uh, as you know, uh, Cotton has a lot of experience, you know, at least 25 years uh, of experience. And uh, this could, uh, uh, if Cotton's in, in any condition, he's Good left hook tell. to the midsection that time by Torres. Thank you, Carlos. Uh, Jose looks very strong, very strong. Yes, I would have to agree. Even though he is shorter in height and reach and was outweighed by the challenger, he still looks much bigger than the challenger. It's a very deceptive thing physically. Oh, yes. Well, Jose has never been a, a, a legitimate light heavyweight. You know, he's, he's more legitimate uh, a middleweight than he's a light heavyweight. Yes. And uh, he had a game weight to, uh, to fight for the, the light heavyweight title against... Uh, Pastrana. Willie Pastrana, yes. And he's done very well up, up to uh, so far, anyway. Well, the only two light heavyweights he met, he KO'd both of them. That was a good right hand. There's one minute to go in round three. You know, Carlos Jose won the light heavyweight title the second time he ever fought a light heavyweight. That's right, that's right. And I was very surprised. Uh, because I thought he would never, you know, could, could never make uh, uh, or be strong at the uh, light heavyweight uh, limits. But he looks terrific. 
That solid oh, left, hook, yes. left uh, jab that time by Torres. Cotton took that one and snapped his head. It was almost like a left oh. hook the way it went in there. <laughs> yes. That right was high on the forehead by Cotton. Torres is looking at his corner and smiling. A good left hook that time. That one got in. Cotton tried a right uppercut there. It was blocked effectively by the elbows of Torres. We're in round three. That left the body scored. Ten seconds to go in round three. We are in round four. Tommy Roberts here at ringside in Las Vegas, Nevada. The light heavyweight championship is on the line. The challenger in white trunks is Eddie Cotton. The champion in black trunks is Jose Torres. And it would appear that so far in the fight, it belongs to Torres. Eddie Cotton has a lot of ring savvy going for him. Trying to work inside. Oh, that overhand right by Torres just missed. That could have been Finney if it landed. <laughs> Carlos Ortiz, the lightweight champion of the world, is with us here at ringside. You know, you know Tommy, uh, 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 Jose has a, a, a very sneaky right hand of his own, you know. And, uh, oh, that was low. That was low, and referee... Referee Nate Morgan is warning Cotton for an unintentional low blow. They touch gloves. And now Torres is going after his man. It doesn't That's hurt too much, uh, Tommy. If it's not flush and, uh, and the cup, it doesn't hurt too much. You know, so let's not get too much worry about those blow blows. Good. Good observation, Carlos. Only a fighter would know that. <laughs> yes, yes. But even though it's not, it's not flush, it's still low, so... Uh... Hard right hand, and a follow-up left by Torres. And that shook up Eddie Cotton, the challenger. There's another hard right hand thrust. He's got Cotton just a little bit soft right now. Jose Torres opening up those big guns here in round four. Another overhead right, a left hook, a left to the stomach. And Cotton comes fighting back. Game lead with one minute to go in round four as the action picks up here in Las Vegas. This is Torre's first appearance out west in person since 1958. You know, he was sidelined almost a year with a lingering intestinal ailment after he won the title, but he looks sharp tonight. Eddie light cut. Uh, is that on the eye or off on the side, Carlos? Yeah. I don't think it's on the brow of the eye. I think it's off, maybe just in the corner. Yeah, right on the corner. You are right. He's right over top of our microphone now, and it is. Slight cut on the edge. There's another hard right by Torres. And a left and right. Scored another left and right. Another left and right. And Torres is scoring a shot. And he's fighting back. Ten seconds to go in round number four. Jose Torres unlimbering the big gun, bombing him in there on Eddie Cotton. And Cotton comes back in. Well, the tempo has picked up here tremendously at the end of round four. Torres was scoring very well, and then Eddie Cotton came fighting right back like a good challenger should to go after the champion. We're in round five, and Torres better not be careless or take his man for granted as Carlos Ortiz, our lightweight champion, has just pointed out. Teddy Bantham is working on the cut on the left eye of Eddie Cotton, and he is a good cut man because he probably help save the title for Carlos Ortiz by stopping that gash. That's right, Tommy, and I think uh, Teddy, Teddy Benton is one of the finest, uh, or one of the, the, I mean, the best trainer there is uh, uh, in boxing today. Uh, I don't think I would, I would get anybody else in that corner besides Teddy. All right, we're in round five. Left and a right by Torres. We're looking to see the reaction. There was none in the face of Eddie Cotton. Torres looks to his corner for instructions. Eddie's scoring with those left jabs, Tommy. So that's why I say Torres better be, uh, be careful. That uppercut missed by Cotton. And Cotton makes a face of disgust, as if to say, just a little bit lower and I would have been on the mark. 
Cotton jabbing. Torrey's coming out of that peekaboo, scoring with his own jabs. Good, strong, authoritative jabs they are. That overhand right, which has been very effective for Torres, missed that time. The first champion Eddie Cotton ever fought was the old mongoose, ageless Archie Moore, and it was a non-title over the weight bout in Seattle back in 1957. Cotton fought Harold Johnson in Seattle for the light heavyweight title in 61, losing in 15 rounds, and it was Cotton's first title try. Right to the jaw by Torres, and that cut over the left eye of Eddie Cotton has opened up less than a minute now in round five. Boys go in close. You know, this cut, I mean, this cut might be old, but, you know, he's not easily knocked out, and uh, this is one thing that Jose is, that left uh, scored well. is uh, thinking of doing. That body shot was blocked by Cotton, but that uppercut by Cotton scored, and he racks the champion with a right. Cotton comes fighting back. That one was blocked. Cotton punch was blocked. The uppercut scored. Torres is laughing. He's very upset. And now they plug it out toe-to-toe -to -toe in the center of the ring here in round five in Las Vegas in a surprisingly thrilling bout. A lot of people thought it would be over before the fifth round rolled around. We have 10 seconds remaining in round five. Round six here in Las Vegas, Tommy Roberts at ringside. The challenger, Eddie Cotton in white trunks, the champion, Jose Torres in black, in case you just joined us. A surprisingly good fight, the last two rounds providing plenty of action. We'd like to get a comment or two from one of the all-time ring greats, Joe Lewis. Joe, what have you thought so far of the fight that Eddie Cotton has put up? Well, I think that, that, that Cotton has really surprised the whole everybody in the building. I think that, you know, uh, Cotton there, by speaking about that, his age of 40, I mean, 40 years old, boxing is such a young fellow, but I think Cotton has surprised everyone. Well, you said he had a good chance to upset the champion. Yeah, I did. I gave him a good chance to upset him because that Cotton is, you know, he's a, he a good boxer and he know how to use the left hand to keep him off him. The only thing he couldn't got to worry about, don't run into no, no wild left or wild right. All right, there is a small scratch type cut over the, in the corner of the left eye of Eddie Cotton, but Teddy Bantham succeeds in closing it up wonderfully well during rounds until Jose Torres can come back and try and reopen it, but it is not of a serious nature and it is closed right now. That overhand right by Torres has been particularly effective. That left hook landed that time. Cotton's left missed. Little short, choppy punches by Cotton are getting in there to the body. Two great champions with me at ringside, Joe Lewis and Carlos Ortiz, enjoying the fight tremendously as we hope you are. This fight is being seen in Mexico and in Puerto Rico as well for the facilities of Sports Network. In fact, Mr. Sam well, Ray, in about 120 cities. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I remember. Carly, you should know more about this ring than anybody out here. You, you <laughs> Joe Lewis just said Carlos should know this ring better than anybody. Of course, he's referring to the fact that Carlos took the title from Joe Brown in this ring. And we have one minute to go in round six. What happened that time? Eddie Cotton really scored, and the nose of Jose Torres is bleeding. That overhand right, a hard left to the body by the champion. Eddie Cotton coming in with another uppercut, a little low of the mark. Well, Tommy, uh, uh, Joe is uh, scoring very well with that uh, upper right hand uppercut, you know, to the, the next section. There's a flurry by the champion. A solid left by Cotton, a solid left by Cotton, another right by Cotton. Another right by Cotton, a left and a right. And Jose Torres is going into that peekaboo style of defense, trying to weather this attack by Eddie Cotton. Eddie Cotton fighting for his very life, and he has the champion bleeding from the nose. The overhand right by Torres, 10 seconds to go here in round six of a thriller from Las Vegas. This is round seven, and there are many that thought the fight wouldn't get this far. In fact, it was eight to five here in Las Vegas that it wouldn't go the distance. Torres was talking about fighting Wednesday's winner of the Chick Calderwood-Piero del Papa fight in Italy, and then he wants 
to fight that winner, and after that, Cassius Clay, but he better worry about Eddie Cotton tonight. You're not kidding. <laughs> Tonight, that's for sure. He is certainly a much tougher fighter in this ring than he looked in workouts. And like I said before, Tommy, uh, uh, Joe is, uh, uh, is getting a little, uh, Jose is getting a little careless against uh, uh, Joe here. And uh, I think he better start getting, seven, seven. getting to work. I think that cut over his eye is going to make him serious if nothing else does. Eddie Cotton, the son of a Baptist minister, born in Oklahoma. Fighting like a typhoon right now, or a tornado, I should say. They don't have typhoons in Oklahoma. They have tornadoes. Torrey's in that strong peekaboo, just laying his weight on Cotton, who retaliates by laying his weight on Torrey. Coming and now uh, uh, Cotton is working with his uh, with his savvy, you know, with his uh, real experience, which is very important at this at this point. As you can see, he's just laying him in there. And make it probably through all the work. All right, Cotton is jabbing well. A determined Eddie Cotton going after the champion, Jose Torres. Scores with a solid right to the nose. And that nose is bleeding, and so is the eye. And Eddie Cotton, pulling some inner strength in those 40-year-old bones, is fighting like his very life depended on it. And probably it does. That overhand right again by Torres. That's been his most effective punch tonight. One minute to go in round seven. Cotton, who has scored 30 knockouts, and Torres, who has scored 26, going at it here in Las Vegas. Eddie Cotton scoring with those long-range jabs. So far, he hasn't been able to get that sneak right hand in there. Those left hooks to the body are partially blocked by Cotton. That one was partially blocked by Torres. There's that overhead right again. Cotton goes back to the jab, sticking it right in the face of the champion. Good long jab. Get a jab and move. We're in round seven, 10 seconds remaining. That's it, Joe. That's it, Joe. Joe, don't go away. We have Joe Lewis and Carlos Ortez, two great champions with us. And after seven rounds, Joe, who do you have ahead at this point? And well, unofficially. I would have to say that I feel that, that uh, Cotton is ahead, maybe a, a couple of rounds. Uh, after the first round, I think that uh, maybe the second round, I think that Cotton have moved up a little bit. All right, Joe Lewis has Cotton ahead. Carlos Ortiz, how do you see it? Well, I would say it's a very uh, a close fight, and I have to agree with Joe at this moment because, uh, as I said before, uh, Cotton is using his experience and he's trying to con uh, and he's conning Joe uh, uh, Torres in. Uh, I mean, he's not Torres is not working as he should. So this is why uh, Cotton is ahead now. All right, we are in round eight. And according to two experts, Joe Lewis and Carlos Ortiz, Eddie Cotton is ahead. The challenger in white, the champion in black. Three times in the past 11 fights since 1960 held in this very ring, the title has changed hands. Kid Perrette won it from Don Jordan, the welterweight title. Carlos Ortiz took the title from Joe Brown and Harold Johnson lost his title to Willie Pastrano, who was later KO'd in nine rounds by the now champion, Jose Torres. There's a wide arcing left. And again, Cotton is throwing that uppercut and it's going just a little bit low. He has been warned by referee Nate Morgan for low blows before. Both cut men, Nick Florio and Teddy Bantham, have succeeded in stopping the cuts over the, in the corners of the eyes, the left eye of Cotton, the right eye of Torres. That overhand right has been the most effective punch for Torres. Cotton has been using his jab and his ring savvy effectively and has scored with good, crisp, sharp punches. 
but not able to mount real combinations against Torres. Getting in good shots again. That overhead right lands squarely. Cotton takes it. A solid left hook to the body and a left to the jaw by Torres. Cotton retaliated with a left hook, as Carlos Ortiz points out. I thought it was partially blocked, Carlos. I thought it wouldn't land the right, right square in the nose. It was very right good hook, though, yes. It's sort of a counter left hook. Uh huh. There's combination by the champion. We're in round eight in Las Vegas. One minute to go. Tommy Roberts here at ringside being helped out by lightweight champion Carlos Ortiz, who came to enjoy the fight and we put him to work. <laughs> Carlos, they tell me they're working, on a, they're working on a title fight with Sugar Ramos for you in Mexico, possibly. Uh, that's right, Tommy. Uh, George Fernandez is here trying to arrange that fight. But, uh, Corey I... scoring well with an attack to the body that time. Has the nose of Eddie Cotton bleeding. Excuse me, Carlos, but that yes. action was important. I'm also arranging a, t a title fight in October with Madison Square Garden, Tommy. Uh-huh. And uh, another one in uh, Los Angeles. You're uh, going to be a busy champion. <laughs> yes. I love to fight. All right, it's round eight. Closing moments. We have 10 seconds to go in round eight. You know, Eileen Eaton, one of the greatest... Uh, uh, You know, Tommy, Eileen Eaton, one of the uh, great uh, woman promoters from Los Angeles over here, also trying to uh, arrange a title fight with me. And uh, uh, he's also, she's also here looking for, uh, for talent, because as you know, uh, Los Angeles is one of the greatest fight towns there is in, uh, in the United States. That's right. Well, there are a great many celebrities here tonight in the Las Vegas Convention Center. Singers Steve Lawrence and Edie Gourmet and uh, Vic Damone and Mel Torme. Uh, Andy Williams, who's heading the show at the uh, fabulous new hotel here on the Strip, Caesars Palace. Andy Williams is here. And uh, what a place that is. Uh, Ed Sullivan is here also, uh, along with the uh, principal men of the Caesars Palace, Jay Sarno and uh, Nate Jacobson, Dave Vickerson, Ed Jacobson. So quite a glittering array of show business and sports personalities on hand. We are in round nine. Jose Torres in danger of losing his title to this aggressive challenger, Eddie Cotton. Nate Morgan breaks them up, one of the few times he's had to separate them tonight. That's it. Good solid left by Torres in black. The challenger is in white. It has been the ring savvy of Eddie Cotton that has carried him this far, and in the opinion of Carlos Ortiz and Joe Lewis, has him ahead in the fight. Torres' nose is bleeding. Torres backing off now instead of going in. Cotton would seem to be more effective at this long range with that jab. I tell you, Tommy, I, if anything's going to win the fight for Cotton, it's going to be that left jab because it's, it's going very, uh, very effectively. And, and uh, uh, if uh, Jose loses, it, he's going to be on account of his killing. He's been very careless there. A hard right and a good left. Cotton was staggered by the flurry of Torres. Last time that happened, it ignited a spark in Cotton, and he came roaring back to take the play away from the champion. But this time, the champion got the combinations in there and got no response from Cotton. Torres landing those little lefts and rights in close. Do they do any real damage, those little short jolts, Carlos? <laughs> they do more damage than a wild, those wild punches that Jose is, to, uh, uh, Jose is throwing now, Tommy, because they, they're very short. This they is good action by our creepy peepy camera at ringside. Right up close. People, people don't notice those little jolts inside. They actually do, do more damage. All right, we're in round nine. One minute remaining. Torres Cotton is has a lot of savvy, Tommy. Very, yes. a lot of experience. One, 
punch in there, Joe. He's making Torres fight his fight. He is. This is what I'm afraid of. Because uh, Cotton is, uh, is um, I think he's ahead at this point, and uh, Torres is, uh, is going along uh, with, uh, with Cotton. Well, the two judges and the referee do the scoring here. It's a five-point must system. Five points to the winner. Four, three, two, one, depending on how badly the other fellow loses. Good combination by Cotton that time. Scored cleanly on the champion. And Torres is bleeding from the nose with 10 seconds remaining here in round nine. Good action from Las Vegas. Well, that's the bell for round nine. And Jose Torres goes back to his corner, as does the challenger, Eddie Cotton. Cotton had two fights this year. He won both of them. He defeated Sipa Fine, the New Zealand light heavyweight champion, and defeated Emil Umek, a German heavyweight. Torres had trouble getting a title shot until realtor Kane Young put up $100,000 as a guarantee for Willie Pastrano, who Torres KO'd in nine rounds, and as we mentioned, it was only the second time he'd ever fought a light heavyweight. Young lost some 20000 uh, making up the guarantee, and Torres got only 2500 but the money doesn't seem important when you get the title, I guess, Carlos. No, uh, Tommy, but it, it does. It's important if you have no money at all. But uh, let's say that, that if you fight for the title next time, you have to get money because this is what you're fighting for. Well, Cotton said uh, to me if he wins the title tonight, he will fight only once or twice more. If he has a bad loss, he'll retire. We are in round 10 of a fight that the price makers in Las Vegas said was eight to five, not to go the distance. It was four to one, three to one, somewhere in there, in favor of Torres. And Torres now is fighting for his crown. Eddie Cotton fighting for his future. A good Following up to the right, a little cut over the left eye of Eddie Cotton and a little cut over the right eye of Jose Torres and the nose of Torres is bleeding. They're not too serious, though, uh, Tommy. No. The cuts are not too serious. Cutman Nick Florio and Teddy Bantham doing great jobs, keeping them in control, in check. But Torres is getting much more of a fight than he or trainer John Manzanet thought they would get tonight. Because I don't, I don't think Torres took this fight too seriously. Well, there was talk that he wanted to put this man away in one round to make it impressive so he could get a shot at play. Yeah. I, I think that would. <laughs> I think that would be a mistake for for Jose, because uh, Clay's a pretty big man. Will I weigh him by another by say 40 pounds? I guess. Cotton laying that jab in there. The nose of Jose Torres is bleeding and has been for the last four or five rounds. Eddie Cotton keeps laying that jab in there. And that's not about to make it any better. Seven, 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 seven. Penetrating the peekaboo defense of Jose Torres. And Torres is thought to have had almost an impregnable defense. But Cotton's experience has found them the secret of getting through. I'm always against this type of uh, defense of the, the peekaboo style. That right landed by Torres. Good combination by Torres. Scoring well on the challenger. And again, another low blow. And Eddie Cotton is warned again. Torres wants to take a little rest. One minute remaining in round 10. Torres looking to take advantage of the low blow. Wants to rest a little bit. Oh, a solid left by the champion Torres. Follows up with a right and staggers Eddie Cotton. That nose is bleeding profusely now. How much bother is that, I think I think the nose is one of... Uh, uh uh, one part that gives you the most trouble once you start uh, bleeding, you know, because uh, then you're breathing. Yes, it does very much. Then you have to breathe with your uh, with your mouth open, and that's a, a, a very dangerous thing. That's how you lose your mouthpiece, and then how you get a broken jaw. That's right, and broken teeth too. Yeah. So those left jabs of Eddie Cotton now beginning to take their toll and playing a very important part in the tide of this championship bout, which has 10 seconds to go in round 10. We hope you're enjoying the Sports Network action from Las Vegas.
Well, it is a surprisingly good fight because the atmosphere here in Las Vegas ranged from outright scorn that Cotton didn't have a chance to some members of the local press picking that Cotton would defeat Tories. So there was a, a wide range of opinion. Jose, when you arrived in Las Vegas, I mean, uh, Carlos, when you arrived in Las Vegas, did you think Tories had a, an easy touch? Well, this is what I thought. Uh, I thought that uh, on account that, uh, of uh, Cotton being 40 years old and not having too many fights this year, uh, that Jose, uh, and being that Jose is only 20, 29, 30 years old, and he would have a, a soft touch on account of the age. But uh, as it seems now, uh, Jose is having a, a, a very rough time and he's in danger of losing his title right now if he doesn't uh, uh, come out and, uh, and fight more. As I say, he's, he's getting very careless in there and, and Cotton is using his experience. Well, of course, we're in round 11. Just about seven years ago, Archie Moore successfully defended his title against Yvonne Durrell, knocking him out in the third round. So age doesn't mean everything. <laughs> this is one one man that you can you you have to uh, uh, you can't talk about because this is this is a, a magnificent oh, a man. by Torres that time, and Cotton came right back with two good left and staggered Torres. Torres immediately went into the crouch and the peekaboo. Good kind of punches by Cotton. Now Cotton again is warned for a low blow. Now that was like to get a hold of referee Nate Morgan to see if he has taken any points or any rounds away. So far Cotton. he hasn't uh, uh, he hasn't indicated it. Torrey's now pressing the attack, getting a bit more vigorous and a bit more aggressive. He has let Cotton dictate the pace and style of the fight, and Cotton has been jabbing and peppering away, making that nose bleed and making the deep breathing difficult for the champion Torres. Cotton, who a few rounds back was ahead in the opinion of Joe Lewis and our guest here at ringside, lightweight champion Carlos Ortiz. Boy, it's been a good fight. Hope you're enjoying it at home. You sure have. There have been more title fights in this ring in Las Vegas in the last six years. This is the 12th title fight, Carlos, more than any other place in the world. That's right. I think Las Vegas has that touch for title yeah. fights. <laughs> they have Point been averaging two a year, which is really remarkable. Right. And it's a, a wonderful place to come and, uh, and uh, defend your title. Sorry, Especially if you have uh, trouble making way because it's so hot here. That's right. Just take a walk in the desert. It's been, <laughs> since I've been here, it's been averaging around 114 degrees wow. outside. <laughs> so you stay in pretty much. Torres has been unable to press that body attack that he said he would in the second round. That one scored. One minute to go in round 11 of a fight that we said before was 8-5, to five, not to go the limit. But Tommy, Cotton... I, Tommy, I spend my, all my time in the swim pool. Yeah. That's a place to be. Eddie Cotton looking fresh and moving well, scoring with the jabs right now. Torres punching harder of the two, but not landing as frequently. I tell you, Cotton is doing terrifically. I, I, I think Cotton's going to win this fight if he keeps this up. If Torres doesn't come out and, and, and starts punching. Well, we have thousands upon thousands, maybe millions upon millions of viewers at home scoring the fight. But it all depends on what three men think, the two right. judges and the referee. You know, Tommy, it's not the same watching it over television as it is watching it in person, you know. Ten seconds to go in round 11. Well, English-born Ruby Bob Fitzsimmons, the third light heavyweight champ in history, was 41 years old when he won the crown. And later, Philadelphia Jack O'Brien stopped Fitz in 13 rounds to become the first American to hold the title. Philadelphia Jack reminds us that Philadelphia was the birthplace of three light heavyweight champions, battling Levinsky, Tommy Loughran, who worked the fight with me out in Pittsburgh with you and uh, Johnny Bizarro, Carlos. Right, right. And, of course, Harold Johnson, Harold who Johnson. doesn't like Las Vegas because he lost his title here <laughs> to Willie Pastrano. You know, they tell me that Pastrano had written up a little retirement speech before that fight with Harold Johnson. That's how little chance he thought. <laughs> and he just caught Harold stale and won the title. We are in round 12 in Las Vegas, Nevada. Tommy Roberts here, Eddie Cotton in white, 
and Jose Torres, the champion in black. John Henry Lewis was the only West Coast fighter to win the light heavyweight crown. He would beat Bob Olin in December of 1935, and Carlos Ortiz, do you think Eddie Cotton stands a good chance at this point of becoming the second? Well, I, I, I have a Cotton ahead uh, uh, at this point. I tell you, he's doing terrific, uh, especially with that jab and that sneaky uh, uh, one-two combination that he has. Uh, like I, I keep saying, uh, he has a, a, a terribly uh, a lack of experience, and Torres is, is just being careless in there. He's, he, I guess he didn't take this fight too... Uh, too uh, uh, he took it lightly, let's say. Well, that is entirely possible, but Eddie Cotton looks very good physically and rather fresh. Maybe his excellent physical shape is accounted for by the fact that he never smokes or drinks. That's right, uh, Tommy. That, that has a lot to do with it, too. Especially uh, for an old fellow like Cotton, that uh, if he takes care of himself, he doesn't dissipate too much. Uh, he uh, he could go on as uh, as much as as long as your, uh, Archie Moore or Archie. All right, we are here in round 12 of a scheduled 15 rounder. Tory scoring inside there with good short. Shocking jolts to the head. And as Carlos Ortiz has pointed out, they hurt. He's wild with that right. That overhead right, though, has been the most effective punch for Torres in case you've joined us late. Now the blood is flowing freely again. A cut in the right eye of Torres, plus his nose. And Cotton is scoring well inside. Three hard punches by Torres, all landed. Good right by Cotton, comes right back into the midsection of the champion. And Torres once again goes into the capable as Cotton is scoring well with sharp choke. And Torres is looking at the referee, asking him to watch the low blows. Referee Nate Morgan, working his very first championship fight, has been doing a good job. He has not broken the fighters too many times. He's been letting them fight. Cotton standing off the champion with those sharp left jabs. Eddie Cotton trying to jab his way to the title right now. Scoring with those right hands and the crowd roars every time he throws that right uppercut. A good sharp right by the champion that time. Another sharp right by Torres. And Cotton weathers the blow. Looks at his corner for instructions. Torres really getting aggressive now. Wading in with lefts and rights. Eddie Cotton takes a deep breath. There are 10 seconds remaining in round 12 as the champion bounces on his toes and comes back to the attack. Well, it is on everyone's mind right now how the scoring is going right now. Referee Nate Morgan is marking his card in the ring. The two judges are marking theirs. There have been no knockdowns. Both boys were shaken up by some good punches earlier in the fight, back around rounds six and seven. We are now waiting for the bell for round 13. Eddie Cotton at 40, the oldest active fighter in the ring today, the oldest active rated fighter, and the champion at 30, the oldest champion. We are in round 13. Nick Florio has put a lot of grease on the face of the champion, Torres, because of the cuts. Eddie Cotton. Three rounds away from a possible title. Jose Torres, three rounds to go to keep his crown. The action has been good. Now that left didn't land, it was blocked by Cotton, who ducked away from it. That right by Cotton scored well. Another right, and a left, and a left, and a right by Cotton. And he's taking the attack of the champion. He's got him in the corner, left and right to the head. And Torres comes out and goes into a clinch. Eddie Cotton wants to break it up. Nate Morgan gets in between them, and Cotton will have to start all over again. The crowd is rooting here for Cotton. Cotton goes again inside with that right uppercut. Several times it's landed low, and it's brought a warning from the referee, Nate Morgan of Chicago, former Golden Glove champion. Cotton calling on all of his ring experience. 74 fights. 
for Eddie Cotton. Eddie Cotton had his first pro fight in 1947. Jose Torres in black trunks. Cotton carrying the fight to him in white at this moment. Cotton gave a little shuffle. Looked like Jersey Joe Walcott there for a minute. <laughs> Joe had that great shuffle. He got that shuffle. Yeah, he was, he paint, was my boy. Paint the left jab and they take yeah. this back and yeah. then come up with a right hand. Beautiful. Yeah. Two steps and come up with that right. Right. It's amazing. Jose. It's amazing how this cut has gone so far and he's doing magnificently at his age. He looks fresh, doesn't he, he Carlos? He looks fresh. He looks in terrific shape. All right, Nate Morgan breaks him up once again. Jose Torres is going to have to unloosen some big guns with one minute to go in round 13. You know, that referee's doing a hell of a job, you know. Champion on the ropes. Cotton keeps him back in there. The nose of Torres is still bleeding, and it may be bothering his breathing, as Carlos Ortiz pointed out. Jabbing, Cotton jabbing, and the crowd yells, jab, jab. Cotton sticks that right in there again, and it scores. Again, the left. Torres blocking the landing of those punches from our camera. But we can see it. That one landed. Cotton landed again, and Torres was wild. His nose is still bleeding. That left jab is bothering Torres very much, Tommy. Good, effective left jab by very the challenger, effective. Eddie Cotton. And Torres bangs away at the rib cage with 10 seconds remaining here in round 13 from Las Vegas. Well, the crowd is roaring. They're pulling for Eddie Cotton, evidently. I guess all the world loves an underdog. Although Jose Torres has been a fine champion, he's been a fine fighter. His record is tremendous. 39 fights, 37 wins, 26 by KO, one draw and one loss, which is certainly a wonderful record. And uh, except for the time he was felled with that intestinal ailment, he's been a fighting champion. That's right, Tommy. Uh, to uh, Torres, uh, Jose has been uh, a very effective, uh uh, fighter. He's always been fighting uh, six, seven, eight times a year, and uh, this is what keeps boxing up. The, the more uh, a fighter fights, uh, the more interested people are in him and in fighting himself. We are in round 14. All right, Carlos Ortiz, thank you very much. We enjoyed having you. We're now in round 14. Overhead right again by Torres. Cotton comes back and scores. A good left hook that time by Torres. Found the mark. Cotton throwing that left jab out there. Johnny Manazette. Shouting instructions to Torres from his corner. Manzanet is his young trainer. Nick Florio is his cut man. Teddy Bantham is the cut man for Cotton. And George Chimera is his manager. Cotton scoring with a right to the midsection. Torres stands there with that peekaboo style. And Cotton goes inside of it and scores with two right short jabs. Schultz to the chin. Torres comes back. A flurry. A couple of hooks to the body. And once again, they go into a clinch. Now Nate Morgan is working harder than he has earlier in the fight, separating them. That clubbing right hand by Torres was partially blocked by Eddie Cotton. Round 14 here in Las Vegas. It's been a good fight. Forty-year-old Eddie Cotton jabbing and generally dictating the way the fight will be fought. That right landed by Torres, but Cotton comes right back. Cotton is fighting back, going after the champion, scoring with lefts and rights to the head. Now Torres fights back, and Cotton covers up. Cotton slips him. Cotton comes back and scores again. 
Cotton did a beautiful job of slipping those punches on the far side of the ring with one minute in round 14, and the crowd senses an upset. Now it is Jose Torres battling to defend his championship. Two great fighters in here tonight. These are the kind of fights that people love. Good action all the way. There's science, there's power. Eddie Cotton calling for that second win. Again goes in with that punch to the body. And it was Torres who they thought was going to do the body punch and at the bell. Well, we have three minutes remaining of action coming up, round 15. Jose Torres still has the cut in the right corner of his eye. His nose is bleeding. Eddie Cotton's cut has been stopped. He is relatively unmarked and relatively fresh. A lot fresher than you'd think a 40-year-old man would be after 14 bruising rounds with a hard-punching champion like Jose Torres. We want to thank Carlos Ortiz for sitting here providing some commentary between and during rounds. All right, the fighters touch gloves. This is the last round, and Torres is going right after Cotton. This could be the most important round of the fight for the decision. And Torres is really throwing leather, and Cotton has got that cut opened up on his right eye. He comes back in with that right to the midsection. He's been scoring with regular monotony. With monotonous regularity, we should say. Just landing it in there. Wild left by the champion. No good. Cotton wants to go back to that jab. Try to keep champion Jose Torres away for just a little bit more than two rounds. Two uh, minutes of this round, if he can. 15th and final round here in Las Vegas. A leaping left by Torres, and that's scored. Nate Morgan breaks them up. He and the two judges are scoring the fight. Boys go into a clinch. There's that strike by Torres. That was a good one. Cotton is hanging on. Cotton went with that left cross that time. Just missed the mark. Torres gets into the peekaboo and comes wading in. And top, Cotton just ties him up. Torrey's anxious to get a big attack moving here, and Cotton just as anxious to keep the champion away. He got Torrey's coming in that time, but it was partially blocked. The left scored. The right was high. That flurry by Torrey's just there was ineffective. Cotton had most of them on the elbows, and they go head to head. Closing moments of this championship fight. One minute remaining in round 15 from Las Vegas. Eddie Cotton and Jose Torres. Crowd is beginning to stand here. Neither fighter has been knocked down, and nobody thought it would go 15 rounds. That was eight to five that it wouldn't. Ten seconds remain in this world's light heavyweight championship fight, and the crowd begins to applaud. That's the end of the fight. We'll have the decision in just one minute.
the decision of this world's light heavyweight championship fight and the crowd is all standing milling about it was a rousing fight as you saw and I just leaned over the ropes and asked Joe Lewis what he thought he had caught in the head earlier he says he thinks the last round went to Torres and won the fight for him that was Joe Lewis's opinion the two judges and the referee do the scoring and now ladies and gentlemen here's the decision the referee Nate Morgan scores it 70 to 67, favor Torres. Judge Petrovich scores it 68, 67, Torres. Judge Amos scores it 69, 67, Torres, the winner and still champion. Jose Torres! Still champion is Jose Torres. Torres. Well, the still light heavyweight champion of the world is Jose Torres, and the decision was very unpopular, of course, with Cotton's Corner. Jose, congratulations on a very tough Thank you, successful Thank defense. You. What uh, seemed to be the trouble? You couldn't get that body attack going. I, I couldn't get off at all. Uh, I wasn't tired at all. I was feeling so good. Uh -huh. I couldn't throw combinations. You couldn't get the combinations? No. I, Did his jab have you off balance? No, it, no, no, it was me. It was you? It wasn't his jab, yeah. I could, I, listen, I couldn't knock him out. Couldn't knock him out. But you couldn't get to him? Did he? Did no, he, no, I couldn't get off. Did he hurt you at any time? One time he gave me a good one hand. He didn't hurt me. How about me. the low blows? One time hurt, no more. One time hurt? Okay, any any plans now for your next fight? Yeah, I'm planning to fight in Puerto Rico, the European champion. All right, well, congratulations on a very Thank exciting you, fight. Jose, Jose Torres still the light heavyweight champion of the world, as you've just witnessed live on SNR.